If you're using an automated Cloudflow trigger like one of these, you need to consider adding trigger conditions. Trigger conditions can be set in most flow triggers. These conditions you set must be true for the trigger to fire. In this Power Automate tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use trigger conditions in your flows to control when your Power Automate flows trigger. If your plan has flow run limits, you can avoid triggering your flows unnecessarily by using trigger conditions. I'll cover four different flow examples that would benefit from trigger conditions. Triggering a flow when a column is changed to a specific value, Triggering a flow when an event is updated or deleted. Triggering a flow when a new folder is created. And triggering a flow when a specific email is received. I'll also show you a trick on how to easily create the expressions needed and give you a few tips on how to troubleshoot your flow. If you're interested in learning how to add trigger conditions to your Power Automate flow, keep watching. To add a trigger condition to your flow, click on the three dots of your flow trigger and select settings. If your trigger allows for setting trigger conditions, you should see a trigger conditions heading in the settings of your flow trigger. To add a trigger condition, click the add button. Enter an expression into the field. To add additional expressions, click the add button. It's important to note that all expressions entered here must be true for the trigger to fire. Each field will accept a single expression. You can add an expression by typing out an expression directly into the field. However, if you are new to Power Automate or if you are an avid user but find it hard to write expressions, use a filter array action instead. How can I trigger my flow only when the status column is changed to complete? This flow example is using the when an item or file is modified trigger. The flow will trigger each time an item is modified in my SharePoint list. I only want this flow to send a Teams notification for items where the status is equal to complete. To only trigger this flow when an item is marked complete, I'll need to add a trigger condition to this flow trigger. Anytime I need to add a trigger condition to an existing flow, I always create a brand new flow so that I can run tests and ensure that the trigger condition is working before editing my existing flow. I've created a new flow with the same trigger as the original flow. Add a filter array action to your flow. We'll use this action to help compose the expression for the trigger condition. Leave the from field blank. In the first value field, insert the status value dynamic content from the flow trigger. I'll leave the operator as is equal to and enter complete. Keep in mind that the text entered in the second value field is case sensitive. Click on edit in advanced mode. Copy the entire expression to your clipboard, including the at symbol. Click on the three dots of your trigger condition and select settings. Click on the add button and paste the expression from your clipboard. Press done. Delete the filter array action. A flow needs a trigger and at least one action to run. Add a compose action. Insert any dynamic content from the list. I'll insert the title dynamic content. Save the flow and run a test. In my SharePoint list, I'm going to modify an item by changing its title. The test flow shouldn't trigger. I'll run another test and change the status column to blocked. The test flow shouldn't trigger either. Lastly, I'll change the status of an item to complete. The flow should trigger. And it has. Now you can copy the trigger condition from this test flow into your working flow and run a few tests. How can I trigger my flow only when an event has been updated or deleted? With this flow trigger, we'll need a way to determine whether an event has been updated or deleted. Add a compose action. Let's take a look at the dynamic content available from this flow trigger. The action type dynamic content will output the action type of the event. I'll insert this dynamic content into the compose action and run a test. In my Outlook calendar, I have a couple of events. Let's add an event and review the output of the Compose action.
the output is added in lowercase. Just like the previous flow, add a filter array action. We'll leave the from field blank. In the value field, insert the action type dynamic content. Because I only want to trigger this flow if an item has been updated or deleted, I'll change the operator to is not equal to, and in the second value field, I'll enter added in lowercase. Click on edit in advanced mode. Copy the entire expression to your clipboard, including the at symbol. Click on the three dots of your trigger condition and select settings. Click on the add button and paste the expression from your clipboard. Press done. Delete the filter array action and run a test. First, I'll add an event to my calendar. The flow should not trigger. Now I'll delete an event. The flow should trigger. And it has. What if you need to add another condition such as only filtering out events with a specific string of text in the event subject? I'm going to replace the dynamic content in the compose action with the subject dynamic content. I only want to trigger this flow if the word vacation is in the event subject. Add a filter array action back into this flow. In the first value field, insert the subject dynamic content. Change the operator to contains. And in the second value field, enter a string of text. I'll enter vacation. Click on edit in advanced mode. Copy the entire expression to your clipboard, including the at symbol. Click on the three dots of your trigger condition and select settings. Click on the add button to add another field for another trigger condition and paste in the expression from your clipboard. Press done. Delete the filter array action and run a test. I'll edit this event and insert the word vacation into the subject. In Power Automate, the flow hasn't run. Why is that? This is because the filter array action is case sensitive. If I change the event subject line to a lowercase v, the flow will run. To prevent your flow from running into case sensitivity issues, you'll need to make an adjustment to your trigger condition expression. Since the string of text we're using in the expression is in lowercase, we'll need to convert the event subject line to lowercase. Wrap the dynamic content in a to lower function. Place your cursor after the first opening parenthesis and type in to lower with an opening parenthesis. Next, place your cursor right before the comma and enter a closing parenthesis. First, I'm going to create a new event with the word vacation in all caps. Because my trigger condition is looking for events that are modified or deleted, I'm going to move my event to a different day so the flow will trigger. The flow has triggered even though the word vacation is in all caps. This is because the expression is converting the event to subject to lowercase first before it checks to see if the word vacation is contained within it. You can add as many trigger conditions you require to your flow trigger to suit your requirements. Remember that all conditions must return a true value. How can I trigger a flow when a new folder is created? Unfortunately, Power Automate doesn't have an automated trigger for when a new folder is created. You'll need to use the when a file is created or modified properties only trigger. Add a compose action. We'll use this compose action to store the name dynamic content from the flow trigger. Next, add a filter array action. Insert the is folder dynamic content into the first value field. Leave the operator as is equal to. In the second value field, enter true. Click on edit in advanced mode. Copy the entire expression to your clipboard, including the at symbol. Click on the three dots of your trigger condition and select settings. Click on the add button and paste the expression from your clipboard. Press done. Delete the filter array action and run a test. First, I'll add a new file to my document library. The flow should not trigger.
Next, I'll add a new folder. The flow should trigger. And it has. What if you want your flow to trigger if a specific word is in the folder name? Just like the previous flow, add another trigger condition. In the filter array action, add the name dynamic content into the first value field. Change the operator to contains and enter a string of text into the second value field. Click on edit in advanced mode. Copy the entire expression to your clipboard, including the at symbol. Click on the three dots of your trigger condition and select settings. Click on the add button to add another field for another trigger condition and paste in the expression from your clipboard. Don't forget to wrap the name dynamic content in a to lower function to avoid any case sensitivity issues. Place your cursor after the first opening parenthesis and type in to lower with an opening parenthesis. Next, place your cursor right before the comma and enter a closing parenthesis. First, I'm going to create a new folder without the string of text I've specified in the trigger condition. The flow should not run. Next, I'll create a subfolder with the string of text to show you that the flow will trigger even if you create a subfolder. The flow ran. You can select a folder in the trigger if you only want your flow to trigger for a specific folder. By leaving this field empty, this flow will trigger anytime a new folder or subfolder is created in the selected document library. How can I trigger a flow when a specific email is received? If you have a busy inbox or monitor a shared mailbox and your flow is using any of these triggers, you should consider adding trigger conditions to your flow trigger. This way, your flow will only trigger when specific emails arrive rather than triggering each time a new email arrives in your inbox or shared mailbox. In this flow example, I'm using the when a new email arrives in a shared mailbox v2 trigger. I only want this flow to trigger when an email from a specific email address with attachments is received. Add a compose action. We'll use this compose action to store the subject of the email. You can select any dynamic content to store here. Remember that a flow requires at least one trigger and one action to run. Next, add a filter array action. Insert the from dynamic content into the first value field. Leave the operator as is equal to. In the second value field, I'm going to paste in an email address from my clipboard. Click on edit in advanced mode. Copy the entire expression to your clipboard, including the at symbol. Click on the three dots of your trigger condition and select settings. Click on the add button and paste in the expression from your clipboard. To prevent any case sensitivity issues, wrap the from dynamic content in a to lower function. Place your cursor after the first opening parenthesis and type in to lower with an opening parenthesis. Next, place your cursor right before the comma and enter a closing parenthesis. Press done. Let's run a test. First, I'll send an email to the shared mailbox without an attachment. The flow doesn't trigger. Now I'll send another email, this time with a couple of attachments. The flow triggers. It's important to note that you won't be able to specify the attachment type in a trigger condition. You will need to add additional actions in your flow to filter out specific attachments. If you want to learn how to filter out specific email attachments and get them from Outlook to SharePoint, check out this video. What other flow scenarios are you working with that can benefit from trigger conditions? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful and plan to add trigger conditions to your flow, please consider giving this video a like. Have you tried asking Copilot to build you a flow? Check out this video if you're interested in seeing what Copilot built me. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on my next Power Automate tutorial. Thanks for watching.